On March 20, 2020 in the city of Albufeira, Portugal, 20-year-old Diogo Goncalves went to meet a girl with whom he was in love. However, the guy had no idea how this romantic evening would end. The beautiful resort town of Albufeira, one of the most visited places in the Algarve region of southern Portugal. There, in 1999, Diogo Goncalves was born, the only child in a poor but hardworking family whose income depended mainly on the rise and fall of tourism. Diogo's parents considered him a good son, those who knew him described him as decent, responsible, hardworking and reliable, and at the same time, a very outgoing young man who loved being surrounded by friends and family. Diogo attended high school in his hometown. After graduating, he began studying computer science to pay for his studies and help with household expenses. In 2015, when he was just 16 years old, he got a job at McDonald's. The student was 17 years old and still working for the famous company when his life took an unexpected and tragic turn. One day, his father collapsed due to a stroke, which, according to media reports, left him in a vegetative state. That same year, while Diogo and his mother were still struggling to cope with his father's difficult situation, another setback befell the young man. His mother, a woman who had always supported him so that he could learn and grow, was hit by a car while on her way to work at the mall where she worked as a cleaner. The car dragged the woman a few meters and she fell into a ditch where she died from her severe injuries. Although the driver fled the scene, the police managed to identify him and he was brought to court. While Diogo waited for the conviction of the perpetrator of his mother's and father's deaths, he had to be transferred to a medical facility where he received the necessary care. His maternal aunt, concerned about his situation, suggested that he move in with her. But they had a serious disagreement and after a few weeks it became impossible for them to live together. Diogo told a friend what was happening and his parents offered him a room in their house in the Algos neighborhood, also located in Algever. At the time, the proximity to the friend's relatives helped the affected student feel at home despite his young age. Diogo demonstrated a great ability to handle and overcome difficult situations through his patience and optimism. In 2017, already at the age of 18, Diogo graduated with a degree in computer technology and managed to complete a six-month internship at Villa Vida Park, a leading five-star tourist hotel. His work impressed the executives who offered him a position as an technician in 2018. Diogo decided to accept and quit his job at a fast food restaurant chain, where he worked for almost a year and reached the position of duty manager. The guy entered a new phase of his life, envisioning a future full of opportunities that would help him move forward after the hard times he had endured. After working at the company for a while and thinking about better times, he even decided to buy a car. Diogo got along very well with his co-workers, including a girl who particularly caught his eye. It was Maria Malvera, a 19-year-old girl who worked as a security guard at the hotel. Maria, too, came from a humble family, and like Diogo, she, too, had had to deal with difficult situations. Her mother had mental problems and her father had left the family when she was very young and she had never spoken to him again. The girl, who worked in the security service, became interested in martial arts and practiced karate. Maria wanted to become a police officer, but when she applied to the academy, she was rejected because of her tattoo. It was this disappointment that led her to enroll to study at Seger Info, a company that trains security guards in various areas of private security. Diogo liked Maria and made it clear to her from the beginning, but she did not reciprocate and treated him coldly. Fabio Acosta, a good friend of Diogo, claimed that the young man was head over heels in love with Maria. According to him, he was obsessed with her to such an extent that he turned down a lucrative job offer at the Sheraton Hotel chain in Lisbon because he did not want to be separated from her. In addition, when the girl was on duty, he would bring her dinner or lunch. Over time, they became inseparable, and those around them took the young people for a couple. However, there was no romantic relationship between them. Maria told Diogo that she wanted nothing to do with him since she had just ended a toxic relationship with a naval officer, but at the same time she was giving him false hopes. Diogo never gave up hope for a future with her and looked for opportunities to be near her and please her in different ways. One day he was greatly disappointed when he came across a video on social media of Maria kissing another girl on the lips. Diogo was upset because he thought she should have told him that she didn't like guys and that this was the reason why they would never be together. Fabio, Diogo's best friend, tried to calm him down by saying that girls often do this, but he was not convinced and insisted that she had lied to him and that was the reason why she had refused. 
Despite the disappointment, Diogo and Maria remained friends, and she continued to accept his gifts and date invitations. Several times Diogo tried to walk her home, but she always told him that her roommate had a jealous boyfriend and she didn't want to let another man into her apartment. Time passed and in December 2019, Diogo was told that he would finally receive compensation for his mother's death which happened three years ago. After the payment, which amounted to 70,000 euros, the young man decided it was time to buy a house so that he wouldn't have to keep paying rent. Diogo shared the happy news with his friend Maria, who quit her job at the hotel a few weeks later. She stated that she could no longer tolerate her co-worker's remarks about the alleged relationship between her and Diogo. The girl also justified that she wanted to spend more time with her mother, who needed a lot of attention because of her mental illness. At the time, there was no reason to doubt her words. However, subsequent events suggest that her decision to quit the hotel was motivated by dark reasons. And that's where the third character in the story, 20-year-old Mariana Fonseca, comes in. She worked as a nurse at the hospital and had a stable relationship with Maria. The girls lived together in the home of Mariana's parents, as they were not yet financially stable enough to have their own home where they could enjoy their relationship. This was the position Maria found herself in when she learned of the large sum of money Diogo would receive. Curiously, from that moment on, the girl began to get closer to her boyfriend. Everything points to the fact that Maria shared information with Marion, and together they decided to deceive the young man to gain access to his bank account data and steal the money received as compensation. The thing is that one day after repeated refusals by Diogo, Maria told the young man that she wanted to spend a romantic evening with him. This was a real gift for the 20-year-old guy who couldn't believe his ears after waiting for so long. The thought of being around the girl he was in love with made him ecstatic. The meeting was set for Friday evening, March 20, 2020. Diogo was delighted and had no doubts about what had made the girl change her mind so suddenly, although Maria and Mariana had different versions of what had happened that day. Below I will give the facts, according to media reports based on official information. As soon as Diogo came in, Mariana offered him the orange juice she had brought herself, but the drink contained an unexpected ingredient, three ampoules of diazepam, a central nervous system drug with anxiolytic and sedative effects. It was Mariana who reportedly suggested the use of the substance, which she had stolen from the hospital where she worked. The girl's plan was to sedate Diogo, gain access to his banking information, and be able to manipulate his fingers to overcome the phone lock. Marion reportedly waited in a car outside the house while her friend carried out the plan. She even texted Maria several times to see if the drug had worked. As it took longer than she had anticipated, the situation inside the house became increasingly tense. Diogo didn't understand what was going on and began to get nervous. Maria then reportedly tried to calm him down by promising him an erotic dance, but first she had to tie him to a table. After being in that position for a few minutes, Diogo panicked and asked Maria to let him go. But she became aggressive and they began to fight using her martial arts expertise. She took control of Diogo, knocked him to the floor and wrapped her arms around his neck, preventing him from breathing. According to Marion's own account, Maria later told her to go inside the apartment, and when she did, she found Diogo on the floor. She asked Maria what had happened and lambasted her for going outside the plan, which was to steal his keys and take his money. Seeing that Diogo was unresponsive, the nurse applied resuscitative measures. But when he woke up, he was very agitated and tried to attack Marion. Perhaps, seeing the other girl, he realized that some conspiracy was organized against him and tried to defend himself, facing Diogo's reaction against his girlfriend. Maria took control of the young man by grabbing him from behind, dropping him to the floor and squeezing his neck again. Diogo's life was cut short at the hands of the girl he loved. His body was left lying in the living room of the house of Maria and Marion, who immediately proceeded with their planned robbery. They first cut off his thumb and index finger, intending to unlock his phone, log into a mobile payment app and transfer money. This took place over the course of several days, as there was a maximum daily rate for this type of transaction at the time. Committing the crime working from home was just about to begin, as restrictions due to the COVID-19 pandemic had just gone into effect. The young man was scheduled to go to work the next day. The girls tried to prevent his co-workers from noticing his absence, looking for him, and reporting him missing. One of Diogo's colleagues in it received a message from his number saying that he would not be able to go to work on set and needed a replacement. But the message had the same effect on the man as an unannounced absence would have had. Diogo didn't like changing shifts from one day to the next, so this request seemed very strange to him. Then he asked him if everything was alright, and received a yes in reply. 
The conversation with this hotel employee and others close to Diogo continued all Friday and part of Saturday, but the strange messages looked less and less like the person from whom they were supposedly coming. One of the recipients of these messages was Diogo's supervisor. One of them said that he would not be returning to work because he had met a woman from France and was going to move in with her. This story seemed strange to the boss, as Diogo was a very responsible person and was not going to quit his job so suddenly. Looking for an answer, he started calling the guy, but he didn't answer. Then he received another message saying that he was not in a condition to talk on the phone. Diogo's boss replied that he could only calm down if they could talk. He wanted to hear his voice and hear his explanation of what was happening to him. The reaction of the victim's loved ones to the messages that Maria and Mariana had sent to them pretending to be Diogo convinced the girls to change their strategy to justify the sudden disappearance of the boyfriend. Then they decided to make it look as if Diogo had decided to end his existence and plotted to dismember his remains and then dispose of them. Maria later said they acted inspired by the TV series Dexter about a forensic scientist who took the lives of criminals and fugitives from justice, erasing the traces of his own crimes by dismembering his victims. Having accomplished their heinous scheme, they stuffed Diogo's body in trash bags in the trunk of their own car, went to an ATM and shopping at the mall, where their hugging and laughing was captured by security cameras. They then traveled to their residence to begin cutting up their victim's body. Eventually, the girl placed Diogo's torso in a black bag and put the remaining parts in a container. While all this was going on at the home of Mariana's parents, Diogo's friends organized a campaign to report him missing and contacted the authorities, who waited the allotted 48 hours to declare him missing. Then the girls left the house. Maria got into Diogo's car and drove to the cliff near the Cabo de San Vincent lighthouse. Sagreshi was followed by Mariana, who was in her car. At approximately 2 p.m. that same day, Mariana threw Diogo's torso off the cliff. She then left the victim's car abandoned nearby. They decided that in this way they could pretend that the young man had thrown himself of his own free will. Maria did not take into account that instead of falling into the sea, the remains were stuck on a rock. The girls left together in Marion's car. They drove seven kilometers in about 12 minutes to the Inferno de Pigo waterfall in the town of Tavira, where they threw what was left of Diogo into the water. Shortly after, the young man's car was found in a parking lot near the Cabo de San Vincent lighthouse. According to the newspaper report, two laptops were found in the car. Forensic police were called to the scene and a land and sea search was conducted, as a result of which the torso of a young man was found partially covered by a black garbage bag. At the same time, at another point on the coast, namely at Inferno de Pigo, a French couple were shocked to find the lad's head. As for Diogo's hands and feet, they were found after an intensive search by police officers. The investigators who took up the case found the circumstances of the victim's death strange, especially since, judging from the information they had gathered about him, he was a quiet man who did not socialize with people of dubious reputation. The police continued to investigate and soon found out that Diogo received a large compensation for the death of his mother. By asking for money orders, investigators discovered that a substantial amount of money had been transferred from Diogo's account to Maria. Logically, the detective's next step was to find Maria to explain why the boyfriend's money ended up in her possession. The girl then tried to convince the police that she killed the young man because he was trying to abuse her. In fact, she claimed that this was the reason why she had left the hotel before the incident. However, a check of the text messages between the victim and Maria revealed that contrary to the girl's claims, this was not the case. She and Diogo became close after Maria stopped working at the first meeting with the officers. The girl claimed that she was solely responsible for planning and executing the actions that led to the fatal shooting. Maria emphasized that Marion had nothing to do with the crime. However, Marion's version of events contradicted her partner's assertions. The nurse explained that Maria told her that she wanted to steal the man's money but intended to take his life. She explained that she wanted to make him suffer to force him to hand over his bank account password. The evidence collected by investigators proved sufficient to convict the two girls. The detectives had at their disposal phone records, the dead man's cell phone and ATM surveillance video. Maria and Marion were arrested on April 1, 2020 and appeared in court in June of that year. The judge closely followed the chronology of events recounted by Maria, who insisted on pleading guilty and denied any involvement of Marion. According to her version, Diogo's body had lain for two days in the suitcase of a car parked in the garage of the house, and it was there that his remains were dismembered. Taking advantage of the hours when Mariana's family was asleep, after listening to Mariana's detailed account of what happened, 
The judge asked several times where Mariana was at the time, as the body was dismembered with surgical precision at the joints. All eyes in the courtroom fell on the nurse. Mariana got ahead of all the questions and said that since everyone knew she worked at the hospital, they believed that she was the one who dismembered the corpse. She then explained that in order to get to the bottom of the matter, it was enough to use the internet. The judge imposed a custodial measure on both on the grounds that it was a serious crime within the legal system, committed in a cold, calculated, reckless, and absolutely brutal manner. A few months later, on February 24, 2021, the trial began. During her testimony at trial on February 26, 2021, Maria confirmed that she originally wanted revenge on Diogo for the alleged attempted violence, but did not intend to take his life. The defendant admitted that her intent was to humiliate the victim and confirmed that her friend had no relationship with the young man and that she was unaware of the alleged attempted violence. Maria also argued that her actions were not about compensation. The girls appeared in court together but did not look at each other throughout the trial. Rumor has it that after the arrest and subsequent jail time, they decided to end their relationship. The trial heard testimony from a number of witnesses, one of whom was forensic expert Teresa Costa. The expert explained that the amount of diazepam found in Diogo's blood was significantly less than expected from the three ampoules, which could indicate that Diogo had not taken the prescribed dose or had taken it many hours before his death. On April 27, 2021, the court handed down its decision. Maria was found guilty of the offenses of aggravated murder, accessory to desecration of a body, robbery, unlawful access, fraud, carjacking and possession of an illegal weapon. She was sentenced to 25 years in prison. She was also ordered to pay Diogo's father 265,000 euros in compensation. Marion was acquitted of the murder charge but found guilty of desecrating a corpse in complicity and fraud, for which she was sentenced to four years in prison. She was released, however, because none of the offenses for which she was convicted involved pretrial detention, at least until final sentencing. The court concluded that Marion's attempt to revive Diogo was a demonstration that she did not intend to kill him. In reaching his decision, the judge took into account a confession originally made by Mariana that she was fully responsible for what she had done. However, this decision was rejected by the Portuguese, who considered Mariana as guilty of the heinous crime against Diogo as Maria. After the verdict, Mariana left the court through the back door, where her father, who had been present at all the hearings, was waiting for her. Neither of them gave statements to reporters.